Edward Gorey was an artist best known for his quirky and witty illustrations. Scott Nash, the chair of the illustration department at Mecca, talked about a new exhibit of Gorey's work at the Portland Public Library, which shows why he is considered one of America's most imaginative and eccentric artists. Scott, most people are familiar with uh, Edward Gorey through the Agnes family and perhaps the opening for Masterpiece Mystery, yep. but he has a lot more in his work than uh, than that. Uh, talk about him and his career a little bit. Yeah, he does have a reputation for being rather macabre and actually is associated with, with horror to some degree, largely because of uh, his sets for Dracula, the uh, book that he did that was particularly popular called The Gashley Crumb Tinies, where horrible things happen to little kids. Um, and as you mentioned, the opening for Mystery. Uh, what I'm particularly proud of with this, this ex exhibition is that it really shows more of the broad range of Edward Gorey. Uh, besides the, his, his penchant for the, the macabre, he was also very dedicated to nonsense, uh, absurdism. He, he had definitely a sense of whimsy as, as well to his work. And I think that's one of the very exciting aspects of this particular exhibition, which has very been, been very aptly named ele um, Elegant Enigmas which I think really captures the quality of his work. And he was more than just an illustrator. He was a writer, and he did costume and set designs. He was, and I'm unearthing more and more about him. I mean, I've been following Gorey for many years, but part, through this exhibition, I found out that actually he's evidently, apparently written a ballet. Uh, he's written an opera that was called The Blue Aspic. It was done in book form, but the idea was creating an opera. He was essentially an extremely well-read man and he was a voracious reader, really interested in various forms of culture, not just high culture, but low culture as well. And you see that as sort of a mashup in a lot of the work that he does. Uh, a lot of work, his work, or most of his work, is sort of black and white pen and ink, although there is some color in it. Uh, did he ever do watercolors of the French countryside, or did he always work in pen and ink, black and white? As far as I, uh, he really worked mostly from his head. He didn't really work from uh, photo reference, except for he made some references to uh, liking, believe it or not, the sports pages of the Boston Globe as reference. And I'm, I don't know whether he's having fun with us when he says that, but, he ta but mostly, I think m most of his work came from his head. He was uncomfortable with color, but and all the more reason that I'm very excited about the fact that we do have some color pieces here. He actually, we have images of his sets, his set designs for the Mikado, which are beautiful, colorful. He actually uses, I mean, it's, it's done in his sort of style, but brighter colors than we normally associate with Gorey. You have uh, about 180 works here in yes. this exhibit, which is quite extensive. Uh, was it difficult to pick only those 180? Uh, it had been curated, and uh, we, it, we were, uh, the, this show has been traveling around a bit, and I'm proud to say that this wonderful space here at the Lewis Gallery, we've only had to cull one piece of his work, as one cover uh, that he had done uh, back in the 30s, uh, that we pulled actually, I'm sorry, it was the 60s, but we actually pulled uh, one, one cover from, from the exhibition. Otherwise, it's all here. Many people think that he actually lived in the last century, meaning the 19th century, but he was really a 20th century man. He was definitely a 20th century man. I mean, his influences were everything from, yes, obscure 18th century or 19th century British uh, literature. He was a French major at Harvard, but he also uh, was very interested in sit television sitcoms, and, he, and uh, I found references to his love for things like the animated version of Batman that came out in the 1990s. So it's all there in this work, I think. Sounds like he's quite a renaissance man. He is a renaissance man, but also in a modern sense of being a renaissance man. So having looked at all of these, what are some of your favorites? I have some particular favorites here. Uh, one, one that I'm very uh, excited about is that we have, some, we have some unfinished works of his. We have sketches, which I think was very generous on the part of the, of the Gory Trust to include some of those images. We also have an unfinished piece, uh, which is uh, an image from the Blue Aspic which is fascinating to me from a technical perspective to see how he actually sketched out the drawings. Um, there's also a piece in here that I was not particularly familiar with called Creativity, which I'm going to be mulling over for quite some time. It depicts elephants in different forms and media, um, everything from smoke to brick, um, and it's just captioned Creativity, and I really am looking to find out more about that as well. There's a lot of creativity, a lot of interesting way of looking at the world, I yeah. think, in his work. Oh yeah. Well, it's a, it, actually it's not 
you know, it's very similar to the way a lot of artists approach looking at the world. We pulled, we culled together um, all sorts of information from different sources, different inspirations, and mix it up in a new way. And that's really what he does. He's just done it in his own sort of particular way, and he did it over the course of many, many, many years. And how long is the exhibit here at the library for? We're very pleased to have this exhibit here for three months. It's going to be here right through, through, through December. So please come on out for it.